What's up, spectators? Welcome back to the episode of Last Window, The Secret of Cape West. Uh, last time, I ended the video right in the middle of a puzzle because it was so frustrating, and because it's a puzzle that somehow involves closing the DS, it completely uh, bugged out my recording, so I got frustrated, so I just ended the video there. Uh, so after reading a guide, because solving it on my own was impossible, um, it took several attempts because I just did not understand what they wanted me to do, but somehow I've stopped the box... The, th the, um, the key is there for me to take. So now we can pick up again where I left off. Oop, hold on a sec. I gotta mute my DS. There we go. Got it. What could this key be for? Hmm. The key has a condor mark on it. I take the condor key. Um, so I have a key. <clears throat> Is that... What, what, what do I want to do now? <clears throat> oh, goodness. Oh, that's something stuck in my throat the worst time. <laughs> okay. A fancy notepad. Can't see anything written in it. A black telephone. I have the same type of phone in my room. Something's on the floor under the table. What's this? Looks like a piece of paper. It's got something written on it, but the lower part's missing. The beginning reads, We know everything. Leave this apartment and its secrets immediately. Niall doesn't forget and still bears a grudge against the wife of George Patrice. This is part of a threatening letter. <clears throat> that reminds me. Mag said something when she received that package. <clears throat> I have my reasons for jumping to such conclusions, especially with a threat like this. I thought it was somebody's idea of a joke at first and tore it up. But when I saw the lack of a sender on the package just now, the contents of this letter came back to me in a flash. This must be the missing piece of the letter she showed me from before. So, the sender was Niall. What else do we have? <clears throat> there are three pillows on the bed. The pillowcases smell brand new, or maybe Mags just washed them. Mags's quilt cover is bright red. I just want to check the nightstands next. Can I? Yes. There's a chest of drawers next to the bed. I'll take a look inside. A pair of leather gloves with an understated hue. It's neatly folded pile of washcloths with a check pattern. Definitely worth investigating. Really? Why? How? What do you... Okay. Apparently, I have to investigate it somehow. With what? I don't have any... I don't have anything. Okay. Goodbye. In my infinite wisdom, I'd guess that it's been revarnished. Either way, she's clearly been using it a long time. The toilet has a wooden cover to match the rest of the decor. There's a sink on one side of the room. Well, it is a bathroom. There are cupboards underneath it as well. This is nothing like the room she rents out. I'm almost insulted. There's a light pink shower curtain in front of the bath. A pot plant over by the side. Every branch has several long, thin leaves. Some shampoo bottles. These look a little pricey. Only the best for mags. Bathtub is immaculate. The bathroom mirror is oval shaped. Like everything else under Mag's Dominion, it's practically gleaming. Small lamp fixed to the wall. Hmm. 
Well, despite what Frank seems to think, I can't find anything from Michael here. All I've got to show for my search is part of a letter and a key with a condor mark. Maybe the key will lead to some sort of clue. Almost time to meet Frank. I better make tracks before Mags comes back. Alright, and Frank should be waiting for us at the cafe. So that's a pretty nice and short walk. So let's go back. Huh? Damn, if she saw me coming out of her room, my ass would have been grass. Mr. Hyde, I apologize for before. Don't worry about it. He comes out smelling like her shampoo and perfume. <laughs> Maybe we can chat again sometime later. As long as that's okay with you. No probs. Okay, now I must be going. Mags goes back inside her room. Ah, Mr. Hyde. How did it go? I managed to have a pretty good look around while you kept her busy. Problem is, I didn't find anything left behind by Michael in there. I see. It wasn't a total waste of time, though. I found this. It's a key with a condor mark. Give it here, Mr. Hyde. And you should avoid trying to go any further in this investigation. Not this again. Why should I stop? And who gave you the right to order me around? Now punch him. Beg your pardon? <laughs> Sorry to disappoint, but I've got plenty of things I still want to investigate. I have a feeling that key's gonna open more than simply a door. If I'm lucky, it might even reveal some of the secrets around here. Are you trying to say you intend to return to the fourth floor to search? Ah, thank you for telling me right now where I need to go. Then I'll tell you again. Stop your investigation. There's no need to waste your time up there. I've searched it thoroughly enough. Just because you haven't managed to find anything doesn't mean I won't. I got a feeling I'm gonna get lucky up there. Now you listen to me. Oh, what the hell, it's no use. Do whatever you like. I'll be on my way. Hold it, Frank. What did you and Mags talk about in here? It was nothing important. We just took the opportunity to do a spot of complaining. Did Dylon come up during the conversation? It seems she was already aware of him leaving. But she's got no idea that he's with Niall. I see. Anyway, I must be going. Frank gets all hot under the collar whenever the subject of the fourth floor comes up. Hey, Tony! Didn't think you and old man Raver would be the sort to sit down together for drinks. Yeah, well, we had things to discuss. Hey, you're not trying to keep secrets from me now, are you? Why would I want to do that? No reason, I guess. Anyway, I need to tell you something, Hyde. It's about Betty. Don't know how to explain it, but it seems I've been given a second chance. You don't say. She told me that she thinks I've changed, for the better, too. And she wants to stick with me from now on. Sounds like you're on to a winner there. Good job. What I'm trying to say is that I owe it all to you, man. What the hell did I do? If you hadn't been around, I wouldn't have been stuck drowning my sorrows, going nowhere. And then how would I have gotten with Betty? I owe you one, man. Before you say anything, I want to find a way to show you my gratitude. Anything you want, consider it done. Easy, Tony. You don't want to start making promises you can't keep. Give me a chance. We don't have much time left in this old place, you know. I really don't want to leave without having the chance to pay you back. If you think of some way I can help out, just give me a shout. Okay, okay, I'll think about it. Say, Tony, are you still short of cash? I had a feeling you'd ask. Do you really need me to answer? There's no way I'm going to turn from brags to riches overnight, you know. What if I told you I knew a way to make big bucks in next to no time? I'd say you better tell me what you have in mind. So you're interested? Just tell me what the deal is first. You gotta promise me you're not gonna spread this around, though. The truth is, there's a precious jewel hidden somewhere on the fourth floor. You're talking about this place, right? 
Sure I am. It's known as the Scarlet Star and went missing 25 years ago. I only heard about it by chance. But what I heard seems to suggest it's hidden right here in this apartment building. Say no more, man. I'm in. Let me guess. The plan is to get to the thing before we have to clear out, right? Got it in one, Tony. Far out. I think it's fair to warn you, though. This could get a little dangerous. So tell me, are you still down with it? Down like a clown, man. You think I'd pass up on the chance to get in on the action like this? Just tell me what you need doing. What are we gonna do? A good starting point would be to meet up by the fourth floor fire door. Got it. We better be careful not to go there together. So if we're spotted, you think people will guess we're up to something? Yeah, the people around here get jumpy real quick. Understood. I'll get going. See you up there, Hyde. Sure, I'll be up later. Okay, fourth floor, fire door. There he is, looking swanky. I got the fire door open, but we got a new problem. There aren't any lights on in there. It's pitch black. Of course. Mag said the power was going to be switched off. The next problem is, even if we find a light, we don't have any keys. Yeah, I already thought about that. The only people who have access to the keys are Mags and Dylon. So, if we ask Dylon, maybe he'll help us? What, you want to ask Dylon to try and get the keys from Mags? Nah, that'd take forever. But hang on. Dylon has his own set. He uses them to get in and out in here and look around. I think he got himself a set just for the fourth floor. Are you sure about that? Yeah, I'm positive. I know because he's opened the place up for me before. Then it's settled. I'll get those keys. Tony, you need to find something we can use to light the way in there. Leave it to me. And good luck getting those keys. Right. Okay, here goes nothing. Tony rushes off and heads downstairs. Right, now to find those fourth floor keys. Alright, so this means we need to go to Dylon's room. So, right... Wait a minute. What's going on here? Okay, nothing there. Toolbox with the handle looks pretty new. There's a bunch of keys inside the drawer. This looks like what Tony was telling me about. I take the fourth floor keys. What took you so long? So, how did it go? Without a hitch, that's how. And you? You get the keys? Yep. Knew you would, man. Here you go. I take the flashlight from Tony. Now I think it's about time we search the fourth floor. Ready when you are. Okay. God, do you remember when I didn't uh, put the thing in the door before and it wouldn't let me out? Oh, this is spooky. This could be a horror thing. They could have made a horror game, but did not.
I take out the fourth floor keys and unlock 406. This is spooky. Some picture frames have been wrapped up in material and left on the table. They've been tied up too, securely for me to unwrap them and take a look. Does he do that? No. Oh, I, I see what he's saying. Some beat up old chairs that are lacking in stability. Either fix them or throw them out, don't just leave them lying around. Picture on the floor, the frame is slightly worn from age. Old photograph of Hotel Cape West. Hmm. Ah. Get a load of this safe. A safe, huh? Got any idea what's inside? Only one way to find out. Guess we need to take a look. A safe with a dial up against the wall. Looks like it's been here for quite a while. Here's the dial. Not a chance. This thing's rusted beyond repair. Not gonna move an inch. Okay. It's no good. This thing's not gonna open. I think we're gonna need some sort of tool. Maybe a crowbar will do the trick. You stay here, I'll go and grab one. Make it quick. You need a light? Nah, I got another flashlight. Be back soon. How does he know where he, to find a crowbar? Am I really gonna find the Scarlet Star up here on the fourth floor? Okay. Probably time I had to think about things so far. While my head was full of the things Bill Will McGrath told me last night, I was visited by somebody in the morning. It was... Uh... Dylon? Dylon was the one who paid me a visit first thing in the morning. He was itching to find out what Will and I had spoken about. After calling Rachel, I caught the news about a jewelry robbery on TV. They interviewed the store owner who described a woman that appeared on the scene. The description reminded me of Marie, so I went and had it out with her. She fled to the roof and eventually confessed to me about it. She told me about her brother and husband once working for Condor. She went on to say that Niall had forced her to play the part of the mysterious woman. I also had the opportunity to talk to Rex, who came to the roof as well. He let me in on the fact that he plans to expose Niall to the world. After hearing what Marie and Rex had to say, I learned that it was none other than Dylon who had been threatening her. We had a chat, and he admitted to working for Niall. His job in the apartment was... While he did so, he was trying to uncover clues about the Scarlet Star. When I exposed him for what he was, he quickly fled the building. Frank noticed that Dylon had vacated the building and asked me to fill him in. He told me about Niall and the connection it had with the LAPD. He also let slip that this, his goal was to expose Hugh Speck and regain his reputation. Lastly, he told me that the one who knew the location of the Scarlet Star was... He told me that Michael knew the whereabouts of the Scarlet Star. He also said that he was sure that Michael had left behind some sort of clue. Thanks to Frank, I now know more about the Scarlet Star. I also learned that Nile was the organization behind Condor, and that Mags was connected to it all. After talking to Dylon and Frank, I headed to Mags' room. I was keen on finding this so-called clue that Michael had left behind. And with Frank's help luring Mags away, I was able to search her room. Unfortunately, my search proved fruitless, and I never found what I was looking for. Instead, I found... Mm -mm. 
I found a key which had a condor mark on it. Instead of handing the key I found to Frank, I kept it. Tony and I then made our way to the fourth floor to take a look around. There's a little doubt left in my mind that there are clues to be found here. But will it reveal the clues that Michael left behind? And where is the Scarlet Star hidden? Will I find something to shed light on the truth behind the incident with my dad? With any luck, everything will become clear once I find what I'm looking for. But as I think about it, I notice an uneasy feeling creeping into my mind. You can now read the events of this chapter in the Last Window novel. Tony? Well, this seems like the perfect time to end this episode and pick up again next time. So, stay tuned and thanks for watching. Bye bye!